Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live in the Qualcomm booth in Barcelona, Spain. We're at Mobile World Congress 2023, and I have to say, if you can't hear the excitement around us in this booth, maybe we've got the sound turned in the wrong way, but I got to tell you, Dan, 2023 Mobile World Congress is on fire. Yeah, we're back, baby. It's been great. You know, after a couple of... Uh, there's years off and then we came back and we were wearing masks and it was really frustrating. Yeah. You know, the energy's good, but also, you know, you can just tell with what's going on in the economy, people are focused. Yes. They are here to do business. We've had some great <laughs> conversations. We got another one right now. That's right. One of the biggest trends out there, biggest discussions in the industry is AI. And I want to introduce Christian Amon, CEO of Qualcomm, who has been in AI for 15 years. Christiana, welcome back to the show. Very happy to be talking to both of you. Thank you for being here in the Qualcomm booth and MWC. Now, oh, absolutely, and we know that you know, you're know you going rail to rail, meeting to meeting, talking to customers and the press. We really do uh, appreciate that. Absolutely. So Qualcomm has been in AI a long time, and over the last few weeks, we're, we, you know there is a ton of talks with the onset of uh, ChatGPT, there's been news and headlines, and you've been in the business for more than a decade, maybe even 15 years that Qualcomm's been in AI. Give us just a little bit of a rundown of sort of Qualcomm's overall perspective on AI and utilization. Absolutely, happy to, and finally, I think the opportunity for Qualcomm yeah. as an AI company is here, right in front of us. You know what is interesting? This MWC, is the one in our history that we have the large number of announcements. We have two new modems, one for 5G Advance, one for X35. We have modems for FWA. We have uh, infrastructure products. We have yeah. a suite of announcements. But the interesting thing, what's getting more <laughs> attention is what we're doing at AI. So last week, we show stable diffusion, large language model with over one billion parameters running on a smartphone. If you look at the potential now, and I think chat TBT events, it, it was a key milestone. As we think about those large language models, very right. complex models, you are going to take the compute from the data center into the devices. And the future of AI is yeah. hybrid, and that's where Qualcomm's gonna play a major role. So most people look at Qualcomm as a communication company. I've been telling them they were not where connected processor company, but the reality is we're going to become as much as an AI company as a communication company. And what I like about this uh, opportunity, just think about the ability to run ChatGPT locally in your phone, right. locally in your PC, and you can do that for as many queries you want in conjunction with the data center. And for you to do that with the computational power, you need a different approach to AI, and that's right. what we do. Performance per watt really matters, and especially if you need to bring the AI to the device, and I think that's the opportunity for Qualcomm right now. Yeah, so Cristiano, uh, I think many people might be unfamiliar with the benefit of running AI at the edge. Is, is it classic uh, privacy, security, latency improvements? It's all of the above, but there's a lot of other applications. Let, let me just walk you to some examples. So let's talk about PCs. Uh, you know, as, as we build Windows on Snapdragon and we're working with Microsoft for the transition of PCs to next generation PCs, if you look what Microsoft demonstrated on, on their studio apps. Yes. You are having a Teams call <laughs> and your dog's barking, somebody has a bag of chips, you have noise, AI will do noise cancellation, have just your voice, that is done in real time. You don't have time to go to the data center to go do that. Right. How to track your eyes, how to pan or zoom your camera. Those are some of the ones that demonstrated. There are many security applications. Um, for example, we now use AI in each one of our technology building blocks. This X75 modem that we announced is the right. very first modem that AI is integrated. Your modem actually get better over time. As you start using your cellular connectivity, uh, it gets better yeah. over time uh, as you learn about the networks and he learns about you. Uh, and then, you know, I go all the way to, I think this conversation of large language models in, uh, in ChatGPT. Uh, if you're going to have a conversation with AI and you want to do that in real time, just look at everybody trying to experiment 
with ChatGPT in the data center, how it actually got slow. The future is hybrid. You're going to have to run that in real time on the devices. It actually makes me think about uh, you know language translation. Here we are at a very global event. You hear, you just walk the halls. You hear hundreds of languages, right? Could your you know smart device be doing all that translation in real time? You could be wearing your, your wireless earbuds and you could be hearing these conversations, being able to engage with anybody in any part of the world. Zero latency. And then I also think about Cristiano sustainability because the amount of power that it takes to run these workloads at the edge has to be significantly less. Is that a couple good examples as well? Look, absolutely. Let me just pick on, on translation. Yeah. Uh, and we actually, I remember we demonstrated this for the first time using AI a couple years ago on a tech summit. Yep. But it's here now. You can see a video and right. AI will automatically put subtitles for you. You can do real-time translation. And I want to talk about the power thing because the power it's, uh, it's an interesting conversation. In one hand, as you think about those large language models, billion parameters, 10 to 20 billion parameters and beyond, you need a lot of computational power. That happened at the same time, the companies are making net zero commitments right. and they need to reduce the total power consumption. That actually creates an opportunity for Qualcomm to be on both sides, not only on the device, yeah. but in the data center, you know, for AI. And I'll give you a practical example of that's already happening right now. It's another thing about Qualcomm that nobody knows about our position in AI. We have been successful in the automotive segment right now. It's been one of the new growth areas for Qualcomm. And one of the applications of the Snapdragon digital chassis is assisted driving ADAS and autonomy. Yeah. All car companies for ADAS want to do reprocessing of that uh, data in the data center. Maybe your car made a better decision than his car and right. you wanted to improve the algos over time. So they're asking to replicate the solution from the car in the data center and we're going into the data center with our uh, AI processes as well. It's a whole new world. It's a great yeah. opportunity for AI with Qualcomm, and maybe that's where the company's going next. Yes, Christiana, we talked all the way from AI and modems to AI in, in smartphones, even on imagery that we've seen for years that you've camera. shown yeah. in, in the camera. Uh, to, uh, I'm super excited about the PC, because quite frankly, the PC really needs a wake-up call, uh, especially in, uh, on the Windows side, and bringing generative AI capabilities to the PC, uh, I think is going to transform the experience, even in little ways, even finding something you want on your files, being able to do that real time uh, video magic uh, that you talked about. But one thing I'd really love to see is, is Qualcomm on the edge, the data center edge, being able to crank out workloads at peak efficiency. There's one thing after covering your company for almost 15 years is when it comes to efficiency of doing things, whether it's raw compute, AI, whatever workload, once your engineers get a target, you go for it, and more times than not, you're successful at it. Look, I like to talk about this because our engineer, when we design some of our technology blocks, we have a mindset that we expect that's going to be for a battery powered device. <laughs> so therefore power, it's not separated from performance. And, uh, and it's becoming quite interesting how you see that comes into results for the company. That's why when we got right. in the automotive industry, it was a no brainer because we have a, such a disruptive performance per watt in an right. electrical car. How much electricity you're going to consume, uh, it matters. You won't put a server in the trunk of a car, that's not going to work. But the interesting thing is this uh, conversation about running uh, you know, large AI models. When we show our demo, Stable Diffusion, one thing that was my favorite thing to read, there was one tech analyst, I won't say who it is, <laughs> uh, but there's one tech analyst that basically said, what Qualcomm did is remarkable, I and mean, here's the reason why. You can achieve, you can run the same model on, on a GPU card that goes into desktops, so you can imagine right. who that company is. And he, and he said, yes, Qualcomm did in 15 seconds, that particular GPU that I pointed to, we're doing half the time. But Qualcomm did 
with 200 times less power. <laughs> so now when you think about you the go. potential yeah. of bringing AI into PCs, and you're gonna do it for many things, uh, those things matter. And that's, what, and that's the reason we're so excited about this transition in PCs. Not, about building a new hardware, right. exactly about building a new user experience. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you probably the question that's on the minds of the market. You know, we're hearing a lot of names. You hear about Microsoft, Google, there's an arms race, right? You NVIDIA kind of gets a lot of credit. And as an answer, I can say their name. So um, as saying they're gonna be the foundation of generative AI. But Qualcomm has a, a part to play in this. I'd love to hear how you're telling that story to the market about Qualcomm's opportunity in generative AI. Look, I will, I will basically describe this in a very simple way. You have one question to answer, right? The one question to answer. Do you believe the future of AI is everything runs in the data center, or you believe in a hybrid compute model or a hybrid AI model yeah. that you have to run in the data center, the edge cloud, and the device? If the answer is, is the hybrid compute model, there's no way you're not going to see Qualcomm playing that space. And we know what to do in devices and performance per watt for high performance computing and those uh, models that runs not only a billion parameter but more. And you're probably going to see us next year showing models running locally with 10 to 20 billion parameters. And I think that's, that's what we can do at the edge. It's exciting stuff here. Uh, Cristiano, we're going to give you the last word here. Anything we haven't asked you that we should have asked you that you want to get out to this investor and technology crowd here? Look, I think uh, we have been very busy diversifying the company. We, one of the things that is really happening with us the technologies that we develop for phones, and it's not like, it's a mistake to think that it's a phone chip going into a car, it's a phone chip going to the data oh, center. Oh, you've proven no, that no. was not the case. It's, <laughs> we've had the ability to scale our technology to so many industries, and all of a sudden we found ourselves in a situation that yeah. the single roadmap that we develop for mobile, right. it's finding its way in so many industries. And I think there's a lot of interesting disruptions large language models, hybrid AI, yeah. uh, merging of physical digital spaces, conversions of phones and PCs, uh, yeah. and the car becoming a computer on wheels. All of those things are creating great opportunities for Qualcomm. Cristiano, want to thank you for coming on the 6.5 again. I think this is his third time. Third or fourth. Third yeah. or fourth He's time. always a very generous guest with I his know. time. And I'm, I'm we really appreciate the next that. And I'm, glad yeah. you, I'm glad you answered the question though, because like I said, I think the world really is fascinated by what's going on in generative AI, yeah. but the whole picture, to his point, yeah. is that it's not all going to happen in the cloud well, and the data center. And listen, and that's big. I, I don't. I'm not aware of anybody who doesn't believe that hybrid multi-cloud is, is is the part of the future. And I think sometimes the industry gets in its camps, right, of what can happen and what it doesn't. But I think it's ready. I think it's worth time for the next big disruption out there. Uh, AI on the edge, the deep edge in devices is going to be a thing, whether that's smartphones, cars, PCs. Uh, you have elements of it in the carrier edge. You have elements of it in the hyperscaler data center. You have elements of it in the on-prem data center. So, Cristiano, can't wait to see what you have up your sleeve. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thank good, you. Good talking to both of you and looking forward to the next time. Definitely. All right, everybody, there you have it. Thanks so much for coming here. We are in the Qualcomm booth. This is the 6.5 at Mobile World Congress 2023 in Barcelona. Hit that subscribe button. Check out all the episodes that we did here at the event, and then, of course, all of our shows all the time. For Patrick and myself, though, we got to go. See you later. Take care.